Minotaurs, Minotaurs, many mini Tartars. In my first world building as a young lad, I used big alien Minotaurs as basically a stand in for the elites from Halo on this big snowy forested planet. That's copycat lame, so here's how I adopted them into my fantasy world. This uses the same logic and world building principles from this video how to world build tundras, vikings, and the far north. So if you haven't seen that, go please check it out, leave a like, and subscribe, or leave a very hateful comment that will dig into my subconscious as I fall asleep at night, making my mental health plummet, my grades fail, my job opportunities dwindling. I'd also, go check out my Patreon for extra content, the Minecraft server to play with the community, and the discords that are involved with both. This is the region called Leslon, and about 1500 years ago, there was a massive migration of minotaurs into here from the continent's center. To its south is the very powerful gnome state, and to the west there are several hobbit kingdoms. Just because these are all minotaurs in the region though, does not mean that it's united culturally, politically, or economically. The southern Taiga river valleys are the most densely populated places in the region. Down here they can grow this waxy, acidic grass with plump seeds called bloat. This mostly involves projects of irrigation and fertilization with forest fire ash. Labor and design for large-scale agricultural products are organized and state-mandated by the government over the regular peasants. The kingship distributes its resources so that the local lords give out seeds and have experts on hand who design and oversee big irrigation projects. They also burn portions of the forest in the mountains, take the ash, mix it with a dung, ship it downstream to the farmland, and have it spread out onto the fields. The whole community has to help complete these large-scale projects together, or if somebody doesn't partake, the lords have the option of not giving them their seeds the next year, whipping them, or hanging them upside down in the village square. So, the peasants are subject to the communal projects enforced by the Hrug de Vulte dynasty, but the seed exchange, forced labor, and punishments are all dished out by the local lords. It's not really a feudal system, the king of the empire has the main military power so he can boss everyone else around, but the regional lords do have their own land and laborers as their own domains. Some northern regions of the empire are more autonomous and don't really do the seeds or labor organization, at least not in the same way. So the south is actually quite fractured and split up, but this Hruch de Vult dynasty has consolidated all the taiga and the river valley land into the empire. So this map shows the Minotaur empire at its most expansive and stable. One of their persistent biggest problems, however, is at the northern border. Past the taiga forests, you get rolling hills of tundra and nomadic pastoralist clans of elk riding minotaurs. These tribes have constantly shifting borders and loyalties, so I didn't really show them on the map, but right now the ascendant peoples are the Black Murgors. In the past, the northern region was very violent, with three big warrior tribes in constant struggle. Innocents and people of other tribes were caught in the violence, so a population of displaced, wronged people grew on the fringes of the land, which was then recruited and organized by a clan leader named Heltuma. They became the Black Murgors, and after some years, this army invaded into the east coast, killing, burning, and displacing many of the warrior clans there. Those people mostly ended up as the people of the hills, pushed out by the Black Murgors, who now held the most advantageous economic region. See these little villages in the tundra here? They're actually small way stations where the nomadic people can trade, live comfortably inside for a night, and use as forts when needed. They grow a small amount of tundra plant food here, but they mostly survive off the tribal chiefs who give them food and money because these villages are the backbone of land control and communication. Plus, owning the trade stations allows for people to tax that trade. Which brings me to this city in the southern tundra, called Lohkadont. It's the main trade hub between nomadic tundra minotaurs, the Hroch de Vult dynasty, and gnome traders from the south. The Hroch de Vult dynasty usually declares trading with nomads punishable by death, but they've definitely done it before for nomad proxy wars. Recently though, some people in this trade center have come to build larger ships, and there's become a big industry where nomadic families ferry to the northern tip of the region instead of having to walk there. This is because, each year, nomad clans travel to the land of the Celestial Inns for religious rites, and during the month that this occurs, warfare and criminality are supposed to cease. Supposed to. Keyword. 
The nomadic clans, as well as the settled kingdoms, both hold a disdain for the mountain peoples though. They live in all three major mountain ranges of Lidlon, but are most prominent on this western north-south range. Since the resources up here are very sparse, the Minotaurs live, travel, and scavenge plants and animals alone. They'll sometimes meet up with each other to socialize, procreate, or exchange, but they're mostly living single in caves and mud shelters. The settled and pastoral populations see these mountain peoples as supernatural, engaging in witchcraft, as if you have a good view of the mountain range at night, you can often see flashes, moving lights, and hear strange wailing sounds bouncing off the stone cliffs. Nobody knows who gave these dudes magic, or when, but they've gotten really good at it. Side note, the gnomes to the south claim that all magic, writing, agriculture, and metal was given to the Minotaurs by a legendary gnome hero named Meuthini, but that's a bunch of nationalist BS. If you're near the mountains and you hear a droning horn sound from above you, run and hide as fast as you can. The mountain people have this weird magic where they can blast a horn tube of insanely loud noise and just channel it at a person like up to a mile away, and if you get hit with that column of sound, your eardrums will pop, your blood vessels will break open, and your brain may severely hemorrhage. The noise will surround you and spin your head, you'll shake a lot, and maybe even be lifted off your feet and thrown as the horn sound breaks you down. I call these dudes didgeridoo snipers. A few decades ago in the world, when a nomadic chief insulted a mountain man who strangely traveled into his village, the mountain man saw him as he was traveling with his clan through some hill valleys and didgeridoo sniped him. This started a war where the nomads invaded the mountains, but the mountain men would just use magic to push them off ledges, blind them, and they'd form a line of horn players to snipe the invaders below. The mountain men are usually chill, they don't like being disturbed in their own territory, especially if you're taking their moss, berries, and fish that they rely on in their homes, best to escape and leave with your life and not continue into their home territory. So this is the basic layout for the arctic minotaurs in Lelun. Obviously, not a very peaceful place to live, as resources are scarce and must be heavily controlled and fought over to be used efficiently. But I hope this gave you some inspiration for your world building. I'm Jack from Stoneworks, I love making this content for you guys, so please like and subscribe, dislike if you want, so I can continue doing this. And later I'll see you with my didgeridoo. <laughs>